Wouldn't it be nice to watch somebody tear down a campsite before you had to do it yourself? Hi, I'm Jen Grover, and on this week's episode of Tab Talk, I'm going to walk you through how I'm tearing down my campsite this weekend at Mohican State Park. Stay tuned. Well, it's the end of March, and I'm finally getting out on my first camping trip. I wanted to get out earlier this year, January, February, but I ran into some problems with the batteries on my tow vehicle that took a while to resolve. And then I found out that the company I had used to register my trailer in Pennsylvania, we can use these independent third-party um, notaries to help us with that. Um, they had messed up my registration, so I had to get that squared away. But I'm finally on the road with Maddie Ross, and I'm in Ohio, headed toward Mohican State Park. I've been wanting to camp at Mohican State Park in Ohio for a long time now. It's a beautiful park featuring two forks of the Mohican River, a lake, lots of forest land for hiking and biking, as well as two beautiful campgrounds. I stayed at the small primitive campground, which is right along the clear fork of the Mohican River. This campground has no hookups, so that means I filled my freshwater tank before I left home and relied on the batteries in my tab as well as my Goal Zero Yeti 1000 lithium battery for all of my power needs. The sites in the primitive campground are rather small and large rigs would be ill-advised to attempt to stay there. Each campsite has a picnic table, most of which are looking a little worse for the wear, a fire ring, and a small area to park. The pit toilets at Mohican are pretty nice. They're spacious, they're clean, and the frosted windows provide plenty of light during the day. I met up with my friend Signy, who was staying in the larger campground. This campground has larger sites and also offers both partial and full hookups. As I understand it, this campground and the primitive campground both get very busy during the summer. Even on this rather cool and windy weekend in late March, both campgrounds had many sites full. It probably won't surprise you to hear that my tab drew a lot of attention over the weekend with people frequently stopping to talk to me about it. This included my neighbor at the campground, Marianne, who I had a lovely conversation with. Marianne is getting ready to embark on a journey along the Appalachian Trail. Her story is really amazing and I can't wait to share it with you. Mary Ann has agreed to do an interview for me on the channel, and I'll be posting that in the very near future. Make sure that you subscribe so that you don't miss out on it. You can check out Mary Ann's Facebook page and YouTube channel at The Trekking Titanium. Now that you've had a quick overview of Mohican State Park, let's jump into this week's content, where I'll show you how I prepared to depart from the campground while I was at Mohican. When I started camping, I had no idea what it looked like to set up or tear down a campsite. This weekend I'm camping at Mohican State Park and I'm gonna walk you through everything I need to do to break down my campsite and connect Maddie Ross to my Jeep and head back home. I had hoped to record a setup video first. However, when I arrived Friday, it was pretty close to dark and not nearly enough time to shoot a video. The first couple of years that I camped, I actually religiously used a checklist. I started by using the Ready, Set, Tow checklist created by the original Dutchman tab owners. That list has been modified and grown over the years. Next I moved on to actually creating a app for Windows Phone and Windows that I used personally and made available to other people. I didn't keep that up once the Windows Phone ecosystem disappeared, but there are checklists in the groups and if you search the files you'll find those checklists. I'll also list the steps in the description below, as well as in the companion blog post that I'm going to post this week. That link will be in the description below, as well as at the end of the video. Since I'm dry camping, I don't have to turn the air conditioning off, but if I had been plugged into shore power, 
and using the air conditioner, I would make sure to turn it off. I'll do the same with the Aldi right now. You can camp with the Aldi using it for heat and hot water on battery and propane. So I just turned it off and you'll see the screen power down. Next, I make sure that the Jensen is powered off. I'll also take a second to check to make sure that the TV is secured and it is also powered off. I'll then go through the tab and make sure that the lights are off. Right now I'm noticing that I have my accent lights on. I've got my overhead light on. Turn that off. I'll spin around. I'll look in the bathroom. No light on there, I'm good. But the kitchen light's on, so I'll turn that off as well. And double check on the display that both the water pump and the porch light are off. The next thing I'll do is check the windows. Make sure that the shades and blinds are open and that the windows are in the lock position, which I don't know if you can see, but that's what it looks like when it's in the lock position. I drain the faucets to make sure that if something were to bump a faucet while in transit, water wouldn't come flying out and spill everywhere. I next check the bathroom to make sure that the cassette toilet valve is closed, the shower head is secured, and that the light is off. Next, I go ahead and make sure that the fan is closed. If you have a Max Air fan or have upgraded to the Fantastic Fan vent cover, you may be able to leave your fan open while you drive, which is nice in hot weather, but make sure you read your manual for those products. The Fantastic Fan that comes from the factory as is with no cover and no upgrade cannot be left open while you're driving. You will lose your fan if you do that. Next, I go through and make sure that my latches are closed and that the latch on the drawer is secure. I'll double check the cupboards to make sure they're secure. And also make sure that the Lagoo table is either secure or stowed away if I'm gonna be traveling over rough roads. The last thing I'll do before I head outside is make sure that the bathroom door is secure. Before I head outside, I do wanna remind you, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel, it really helps. And if you find the video helpful, hit the thumbs up, leave a comment, and share the video with someone else. Since I'm dry camping, there are a couple steps that'll be a little easier. I won't have to pull apart the water hose or a sewer hose at this point. I got an early start last night by putting away my portable solar panel, my sunshade, and my outdoor camping chair. Rain was in the forecast overnight, and I just didn't want to deal with those things being wet when I got home. I did, however, leave my camping rug out because it does help keep the mud outside. Since I don't intend to go back inside, I'm gonna go ahead and start to pick up the rug now. I'm gonna power wash it at a car wash on my way home. Since I don't plan on going back into the tab, I went ahead and put this rug away, and now I'm gonna go ahead and lift the stabilizers. I use a Ryobi power drill with a three quarter inch socket. Depending on where I'm camping, I may dump the water in the Aldi hot water tank as well as the low point drains. I am near a water source, so I'm not gonna do that. I try to be very environmentally aware when I camp, but if I was at home or if I was somewhere that had lots of good drainage not near a water source, I'd go ahead and dump those at this point. Also, I'd empty the fresh water drain because gravity then has an opportunity to help more fully empty your tanks while you're driving home. The next thing I'm gonna do is check my tire pressure. I checked it before I left the house, so I don't expect it to be a huge change. We haven't had any huge swings in weather, but there's a good chance I may need to add a pound or so. So I'll check them before I depart. It's a great way to keep on top of your tires to know how they're doing. If you didn't see my video on tire safety, which was a Tab Tip Tuesday, I'll put the link in the description as well as at the top of the screen right now. I'm pulling off the air cap. You can get a tire pressure monitoring system. I would like to do that. I just haven't spent the money on that yet. I have a Ryobi tire inflator. Because it's just a quick weekend, an inflator is good enough. I don't need a full-on compressor. And it's telling me I'm at 50 pounds, so I'm not going to add anything. I'm just going to put that cap right back on. But I will go check the other tire before I move on to the next step. One trick is to find a marker that you won't forget to 
put your cap. That way it's easy to find. I try to find something with contrasting color. So this needs about a half a pound. Next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and close the propane tank. And if you're wondering, I'll leave the battery connected. There's no need to disconnect it. It'll keep the fridge going and also make sure I have 12 volt power to the lights on the trailer. Because the site's on a slope, the tongue jack is up pretty far. So I'm going to lower it before I back up even. lowering it before I back up just because it's easier to spot out of my backup camera. I've got a pretty straight line. I just have to adjust it a little bit when I back up my Jeep. But that's pretty good for now. I'm going to go ahead and remove the coupler lock at this point. And I'll go ahead and lift the coupler. Now because I'm on a slope, I know I'm going to have to use the chocks in order to engage the coupler. I did a video on how that works and why that's important, and you can see that video up here. I can tell from my display that I need to move it back over to the right just a little bit. This is just a tiny bit, maybe an inch. Just a reminder, let the trailer do the work it's supposed to do. Don't try to force it. The coupler's mechanical, so don't use brute force to overcome something that's mechanical. If you have to force it, you're not doing something right in most cases. I go ahead with the safety chains and notice that your safety chains are crossed. And since I'm on this side, I'll go ahead and add the brake cable, breakaway cable. I don't step over the connection between the trailer and the tow vehicle because I'm clumsy and that's a quick way for me to fall and get hurt. I'll walk around. Hook up the other breakaway cable. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and remove the tongue jack wheel. You can store that in a lot of different places. I like to store it right in here. It's safe, it's dry, it's convenient. Latch the hood back up. And you notice my wheels are still chocked. I'm gonna use that little method. There we go. Coupler down. The next thing you'll see me do is insert the coupler lock. Slides right through there. You give it a little twist and cover it. Could somebody take a grinder or the right type of tool and break this? Yep, but it's gonna slow people down and people are gonna wonder why somebody's trying to break off that lock. I'm gonna talk for a second about my new hitch. It's an Loomis Singer hitch made by Anderson and it's an all aluminum hitch. It's stronger, it's lighter weight, and I use it with the Anderson greaseless ball. I love the greaseless ball. There's no mess and it makes it easier to engage and disengage as if you were greasing a tow ball. Now it's time to push the step back in and lock the door. I 
give the door a little tug, make sure it's secure. If I wasn't dry camping at this point, I disconnect from shore power and put that cord away. But since I'm dry camping, I don't have to do that. So even though it was rainy, my seven pin is completely dry because it's been in the keeper that I have for it. Now that I'm hitched up, I'll check the lights to make sure they're all working. When you're alone, it's tough to check the brake lights. So you can use a camera or something like that. I'll also check the blinker lights by turning on the hazards. I'm walking back now to check the hazard lights. And those blinkers are on. While I'm doing a walk around, I'm gonna check the Nautilus hatch and the shower hatch. They're both tight and secure. I'm also gonna take a look at the cassette toilet hatch, which is secure. One tip before I wrap up, and that is if you are interrupted while setting up or tearing down, it's important that you go back through your entire checklist to make sure that everything's done. It won't take you long and it's worthwhile. Inevitably, especially if you have a tab, somebody's gonna stop and ask you about it. I've been stopped several times this morning already and the campground is virtually empty here. It's a small campground to begin with, but it's empty because it's Sunday, getting colder and it's cloudy. And I'm not sure if you can hear it, but the wind's starting to pick up. Please let me know in the comments what I forgot or maybe what you do differently, because this is really a partnership. We're all here to learn from each other. I hope this video was helpful for you. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.